You know, it's unbelievable. I um, I had some shocking news the other day. A girl I went to uh, junior high with, she was actually in my sixth grade class. And, uh, you know, I actually earlier than that even. She was went all through elementary school with me. And she was all the way in junior high, you know, when I lived in the black community of Roosevelt. And she was one of the few black women that actually would befriend me. Mm -hmm. You know, she was actually very nice to me. Her name was Kim Nichols. And I, you know, you know, when I moved away from Roosevelt and stuff, um, we didn't, we were acquaintances, you know, we were acquaintances. She was one of those rare people who just was friendly toward everyone. She spoke to you. Spoke to me, was always very nice. Kim Nichols was her name in Roosevelt. And like, like things happen, like all your childhood acquaintances, you just basically lose track of everyone. But she, uh, not Minister Farrakhan, but she is someone that black people should look up to. Someone who went through school, paid attention in school. In fact, uh, other black kids sometimes would look at her as an Uncle Tom because she spoke so well and she would go to school and actually sit there and behave herself. That was considered being an Uncle Tom back in Roosevelt, I guess. But she was a rare person. Even even the, the hardcore uh, sort of guy would uh, look at her and say, uh, hey, she's okay, though. And she was a real shining light in the black community. Sort of like me. Um, very much like you, yes. You are a minister of quivers. <laughs> You're so ridiculous. But uh, not unlike our own Robin. No, but really, she was one of those rare individuals, Robin, that just was friendly with everyone, went about her business, put her, put her what is the expression, nose to the grindstone? Yes, that's the, that's the expression. And... Um, very, very she lively had ambition. ambition. Went. To, I understand now that she uh, graduated high school and went on to uh, Emerson College. Right. After that, uh, took on the, uh, a radio sales job and uh, became a um, radio person. You know, behind the scenes radio person. She was uh, selling airtime, mm -hmm. which is no easy job. Believe me, sitting there with those clients day in and day out. I couldn't do it. Kissing their ass and telling them to come on the air. I'd be starving if that was uh, my yeah, Because, yeah, the ass kissing would stop after about three seconds. You know, when you're a radio <laughs> salesman, you've got to go out and schmooze people, <laughs> take them to dinner, and I have no patience for that. You know how good I am. Yes, and I really do admire radio salespeople. I'm one of the few people who do. And she went on and became a productive citizen. Who didn't sit there and say uh, 400 years of oppression, blah, 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 blah. This is the day and age now. There are job opportunities. If there aren't, I'll create my own. She went to college and she did her thing. Kim Nichols, great woman. So I get a call the other day during the show. Yeah, because we were doing a story. I didn't even realize I was doing a story about someone you knew. You, of course not. And we're doing this uh, story about some guy who had taken a woman and knifed her in her own apartment, killed her, snuffed her out. And um, then he was claiming to have had four different personalities, right. and that's why he shouldn't be punished. Yeah. So I was on the air screaming that, yeah, he's got to take each personality and electrocute each personality. Who cares? What is this defense with uh, the four different personalities? Everyone's got four different personalities. I got 27 different personalities, and all of them behave themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that amazing? We all have different personalities. Sometimes I act friendly. Sometimes I act like a son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you should have been here yesterday for the fireworks to see how I acted toward Tom, our general manager, after the show. Is that right? There was a blow up? Yeah. I In front it. of Baba Booey, no less. Baba Booey said he didn't know what to do. Oh, I'm glad I wasn't there. No, you missed, a, you missed a, a rare Howard Stern moment. I lost control. It was real ugly. <laughs> Were you in the room for I, that? I was about to walk in, and I heard what's going on, and I went and left. <laughs> Tom and I are not the best of friends anymore. Uh, is that true? Yeah. You're not speaking? Yeah. It was ugly, wasn't it, Gary? I got to say, in all the time that I've ever been with you, that's probably in the top three, because usually when you get angry, you shut the door, and this time the door was open, and then you were yelling down the hall. Well, I you were yelling loud enough so that everyone down the hall could hear you. I declared to the whole radio station that Tom was an imbecile. <sighs> You, the, uh, you yell the F word a lot. Use it a lot. You should have been fined for what you said off the air. Exactly. In fact, the FCC has contacted me. They want to <laughs> find me for my conversation with Tom yesterday. I have to ask the you Tom, something. Tom, it was bad yesterday, I right? Thought, I thought we made up. We did make up, though, oh, afterwards, absolutely. but we try to make up, but there are some hard feelings there, aren't there? No. Oh, my part there are. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't understand you. You seem like a reasonable human being to me. Yes. 
I am. <laughs> and then... I'm always... Listen, Robin, at your worst, and you can interview me about this for your book. <laughs> at your worst, I always try to be reasonable with you. I can put up with... If I see someone is in pain, or so, yeah. I try to help... I try to help my fellow man. Yeah. But Tom, Tom pushes me right over the edge. He pushes me right over the edge. Because you do. You lose it with him. Tom handled it like a gentleman. I lost it I on him. And, and he turned away. around and walked away. He knew to walk away. Really? Yeah. I, I, you better get out, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't better. It was just that it seemed like it was this, that was the thing to do. There was, I, the, uh, there was no staying. I apologize. Tom is even on. I spit on Tom's back. Oh. He didn't know. He was walking around with a big loogie on his back yesterday. <laughs> it was very <laughs> no, I, I, uh, what is it that makes you go that way with Tom? It's a personal thing. Is Tom, it's something about Tom. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing professional. It's just personal. Yeah, because that is not you normally. No, he, he knows why he pushes me over the edge. Yeah. Yeah. He knows why. Right. But anyway, so I, I came in to respond to that. And I have a great idea for the guy with the four personalities. Yeah. Don't kill all four of them. Just kill the one. If the other three survive, great. That's right. If, if he really truly has four personalities, <laughs> the other three will survive. Right, exactly. That's right. I agree with that. Only kill one of the personalities. Only the one that did it. Anyway, um, I was screaming and ranting and raving about this case. And then a woman called up and said, look, I'm a friend of the girl and you knew her. And I went into shock because I said, here is a woman who beat the odds. And it was not e an easy time uh, in the 60s for a young black woman to uh, behave herself and to pay attention to her schoolwork because there was a lot of nonsense going on in the schools. And she beat the odds and went on and became very successful. And she really was one of those shining lights in the black community. She was one of those shining lights for all humanity. She was just someone who survived, worked hard. She was an asset to this country. So I got a letter from her family. Oh, you did? Yes, I did. Oh, I'm glad they heard. And I would like to share it with you. Dear Howard, we would like to thank you for your warm words of kindness concerning our sister, Kim Nichols, and her murder in December of 1990. We were notified on Monday by a loyal listener about the segment which aired Friday morning regarding the impending verdict of our sister's murder. We are so proud to report that shortly after your program aired, the defendant, better known as Apple Crisp, is that his name? Evidently. Was found guilty of murder. So there is a happy ending to this. Well, thank goodness. Our, but they, our, yes. There's still no death penalty here. No. Our family was so touched by the content of this segment since the circumstances, cir circumstances of Kim's death were initially heavily publicized, but as three years passed, somehow her story was no longer important. She became a number in a sea of statistics. You, Robin, and the caller charged change that rather for us it was very frightening to think that this con man would allege multiple personalities such as Zygor and George who gave commands to decapitate and gut a human being uh. evidently it was even worse than I originally Never, knew yeah. and I can only think of this girl's face as uh, I read this to decapitate and gut a human being with the possibility of being vindicated as you may remember Kim was an ad exec at a uh, at another radio station at 30 Rock, she had a lot of respect for you and tracked your career over the years. She was proud that you and she were school chums in Roosevelt, Long Island. Again, we would like to thank you, Robin, and the caller. If at all possible, we would appreciate a taped copy of the segment, which, of course, we can't release, Robin, as a memoriam to Kim. No, we'll, we'll send that along, and that is from Tracy and Wendy Nichols. And I didn't know she had sisters. Well, we I'm glad that yeah. at least he was convicted. He was convicted. Zygor and George, however, remain free. Unfortunately, we will continue. And, and that family will also have to pay taxes to contribute to his upkeep. Yeah. Well, I didn't mean to bring it down. But, you know, we were talking about this stuff, so I just thought yeah. I'd... I'd uh, I wanted to mention it. Uh, she really was a super person. Really it's important uh, we keep George and Zygor alive. George and Zygor will be uh, kept alive by taxpayer dollar. And uh, I am for anybody who runs for governor who is willing to uh, bring the death penalty to New York. I don't care. I don't even care if you're qualified. V vote for me for governor. I'll bring the death penalty to New York. Just elect me. And that's what I'll do. And then I'll resign. I'll, we'll put someone competent in there. As <laughs> soon as I get that through. How's that? That sounds good. Yeah. I, in fact, I would run under, under the uh, guise of saying to my constituents... Look, I am not qualified to be governor. In fact, I'm not sure what I'm qualified to be. I'm not sure I'm qualified to be on this radio station. The government's trying to figure that out right now. But what I am qualified to do is bring the death penalty to New York. And if you elect me governor, what I will do, I'll run alongside with somebody competent, and I will step down 
after I bring the death penalty to New York. Good. Fair enough deal? I won't try to fix anything. If you want, I'll get rid of the Jones Beach toll. I'll throw that in as a bonus for our Long Island listeners. <laughs> That's what I would do. That would be my platform. If you want, I'll fix the economy. It's up to you. But uh, if you don't want me to, fine. I'll just, I'll just get, get you the death penalty. You just write down my name. You don't even, I'm not even going to run on a party or anything. Just write my name in. Could you fix the traffic problem? In the... You want to know something what I would fix? I've got to tell you what I would fix. I, if someone would let me fix things, all I would do is fix roads. That would be my whole job. I know I'm not qualified to do anything else. You're the, the roads, governor of the roads. I would be governor. I would go out and get competitive bids. It would blow everyone's mind. This snowstorm, what it has done to the roads, is unbelievable. And you know what I would fix? Damn it. It's simple stuff. I wouldn't try to fix the complicated stuff. I'd bring in an expert to do that. I would fix uh, Gary's teeth. Right. <laughs> now, yeah. that's complicated. Yeah, but no, I would Look fix... at how many times that has been. All right, I'm not qualified to fix that either. <laughs> Eating bits. No, I would fix one thing. I'm a guy who drives in from Long Island, so it's, it's other people have to experience this. Anybody... At 4.30 in the morning, Robin, mm -hmm. or 5 o'clock when I'm driving into work, the roads are empty. I pull up to go into Manhattan at this toll booth. There is a line of cars. Now, mind you, the whole road is empty. There is a line of cars because they will only put one toll collector. On they, at night? Now, these toll collectors see every day at 5 in the morning that the, the traffic is backed up. You would say, someone would say to themselves, you know, we're going to put two or three toll collectors on. Yeah, we obviously They want to give you oxygen no matter what. Yeah, they want to kill you no matter what time of day. I would sit there and say, you know, there's one way I could improve service. And then the other thing I would do, damn it, this is simple stuff. People would love me as governor. I would make it so that your cable company would have to compete with another cable company. Now, There'd listen to this. Two different cable there would be two different cable companies in your area. Do you know in Manhattan right now there's a competing cable company? No, there's not. Oh, yes, there is. They only, they have different areas. Well, Territory. yeah, not in all of Manhattan. There, in Manhattan, there is something called, what is it, Liberty Paradise. Cable? Li no, Liberty no. Cable just moved into some oh, of Time right? Warner's area. Yeah. Is that right? Now, in some areas, you not only are stuck with Time Warner anymore, you now can get Liberty Cable. Can I get that? Uh, possibly. They have 60 channels. And now, when, when they sit there and put you on hold for 20 minutes, and they don't answer your questions and don't show up for a service call, you can now switch. That's called competition. Yes. Aha, competition. Why the government is protecting these cable companies and allowing yeah, what them... What was the idea of saying one cable company per? Why can we have more than one phone company? Why can't we... Well, if we can do that, certainly can't we uh, have uh, more than one cable company? So I, you, I would be fantastic. These are the kinds of things I would change in people's lives. Yeah, the things that affect you. TV. TV. <laughs> and these are the things that... Let me tell you something, Robin. Life is very simple for people. The things that really affect people are TV, tolls... You know, getting into work is a major thing that affects people. <laughs> I am aware of this. I always thought it should be free from midnight to six. But I will give you... Listen, don't, don't get nuts. we got to keep the roads fixed. i got to keep the roads fixed. I, 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 listen, you're, you're blowing my mind. I'm trying to keep things simple. <laughs> but the one thing I would do is bring the death penalty, and then I will resign. All right. Uh, so people don't have to be nervous. Well, speaking of crimes and criminals... And I'm stuff, in the middle of Nambla, but go ahead. Well, you know, you know those... I don't know if you want to talk to these guys, but these, you know those two brothers... From the West Coast. The Menendez brothers? No, not those guys. Yeah, we like those guys. Aren't they a wrestling... Uh... No. You know the two guys that make the Manson t-shirts and the Jeffrey Dahmer t-shirts? Yeah. Yes. They're on the phone. They always hear you trashing them. They want to defend themselves. Oh, come on. How could you even... Why would you call me after that touching story I told you about a friend of mine who was beheaded and gutted in her own apartment? A lovely woman. Why would you call me and tell me that making t-shirts out of these mass murderers is something that I should defend? Find it here. What? Hello? They're Howard. trying to find themselves on the radio. Uh, well, if you're going to find yourself on the radio, I'm hanging up. I have no interest in this. Howard, we're right here. This is Dan Lemon of Zooport. I don't care. Why are you announcing your name? I, I don't want to talk to you. Hey, we just finished. We hear you talking about us in California. Okay? We're here in New York. We just finished doing Geraldo. Okay? Yeah. We were at your studio. We want to talk with you and say, hey, we do a Jeffrey Dahmer shirt. We do all kinds of shirts. All right. So what do you want from me? I'm not a fan of that. That's life. We got, hey, we got publicity. Hey, that's the deal. About it's rock and roll. <laughs> no, no, no. It's murder. Yeah, no. Yeah, don't, don't hey, call Charlie me didn't up. kill anybody. Who didn't? Charlie Manson didn't kill anybody. Yeah, I'm okay. About Charlie Manson. Yeah, Charlie Manson killed plenty of people. Why is he in jail? Right, right. He didn't kill anyone. Yeah, and and why is he doing in jail? Because he was convicted on conspiracy. He All was right. Charlie. Charlie Manson was guilty. How about Dama? So what are you a fan? Dahmer, Dahmer of? Are you did telling society me a favor. You're a fan. Oh, Dahmer did a society a favor. Yes, yeah, we got a we got a T-shirt that says Jeffrey Dahmer with with Chef Boyardee says Chef Jeff says tattoo tastes great. 
All right. Well, listen, you're a you're a sick guy. But you know what? As wacky as these guys are, yeah. you know, they, they're the ones who uh, gave Axel the Manson album and turned him on to, like, the Manson exactly music. Exactly right. Yeah, well, I don't agree with uh, Axel Rose putting out a Charlie Manson song. He's a despicable mutant. Charlie and... Manson was a great songwriter. All right. Well, listen, you're an outrage, and, uh, uh, and I'm not going to sit there and talk to you. I'm not going to... It's uh, only rock and roll. It's hey, only and, rock and roll. And David Geffen doesn't have the guts. What I hope happens to you is I hope that you're wandering the desert one day and a group of people who follow someone come along and behead you and gut you. You freak. Thank you. <laughs> He's a freak. That's all. He's super freak. It's rock and roll. <laughs> you don't even know what it is. It's money. That's right. These guys will, uh, they, uh, they're insane. <laughs> okay. Free Dahmer, Dahmer was doing the world a favor. <laughs> so anyway, let me get back to the Nambla tape. Please, let's get to something, something pleasant. Less. Yeah, let's get to something fun. <laughs> all right, we'll be back.